Now let's see. I'm going to hold like this and then Oh, hi, sorry. <laughs> Oops. I was just practicing because I'm going to be going on a roller coaster a little bit later and I wanted to practice my facial expressions. How do I look? They look okay. Whew. Didn't think you were watching. Anyway, you know, it's actually pretty good that I was doing that because it reminds me of a riddle that involves roller coasters. Let's take a look at it together and see the ups and downs of this question. All right, a King de Ka train has four seats per car, but the last car has only two seats. Question is, how many seats are on one King de Ka train? Well, let's take a look at this little table which shows the cars per train for different roller coasters. We're looking at the King de Ka, which we see if we go up to this end of this bar here, we see five. It means that there's five cars per train. Now, we're told that uh, the train has four seats per car, but the last car has only two seats. So there's five cars, but that last one, the fifth one, has only two seats. The rest of them, the four others, will have four seats. So let's figure out how to view this. Well, I can sh kind of show it to you. In fact, I'll show it to you, and I'll actually bring it on like a roller coaster. You ready? Here it comes. Ooh, oops, here it comes. Ready? Okay, I think you get the idea. So let's check it out and see if this is really right. So we see that there's going to be uh, five cars, and the cars are represented right here. One, two, three, four, five. And notice that uh, each car has four seats, and you can see that right here, four seats, except for the last one, which has only two seats. And so this represents, in fact, uh, one train on the roller coaster. So. Uh, how many seats are there? Well, of course, you could just count them, but that's not the point. The point is to realize there's different ways of actually systematically making sure we count everything and do it correctly, because you might lose count as you're going through. So let me show you one way. One way is to lasso these green cars together like this. Whoosh. Whoosh. Now, when I lasso it that way, how would I write that? Well, I would write that as I have two times, because I have two of these things, I have two lassos, so two times, and then two times what? Well, notice that I have uh, groups of two, group of two, group of two, group of two, group of two, and how many groups of two do I have? I have one, two, three, four, so I have two times four groups, okay? And that's for the top red circle, and then I have a bottom red circle, and that's why I multiply by 2. So if I work the now, and then don't forget about these two guys hanging out there, little hangout guys. Little hangout guys, the little hangout guys. So now, if we notice that we have parentheses, we always have to perform the operation inside the parentheses first. So that's going to be 2 times 4, which is 8. So this is going to be 2 times 8, and then plus that 2. And notice that checks, by the way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes! Now, two times eight is 16. And then we have to add the two. Because remember, we do the multiplication first, and then we add the two. That's always the rule. And now 16 plus two is 18. So we see the answer is 18. There must be 18, uh, there must be 18 seats on this particular train. But there's another whole way of looking at this. And I want to show you the other whole way of looking at it because it's kind of interesting. It allows us to kind of see, see math in a different way. So let me just slide everything up here. Let me slide it up a little teeny bit. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the train down. It's like a free fall train. You ever, you ever go on those rides where the thing just falls? I did that once, and that was really scary, by the way, really scary. Some people like that, but I was like, I don't know if I like this or not. And they were like, oh, yeah. Okay, now, another way of grouping this is to realize that I can look at these as little pockets right here, these, uh, the cars themselves. So let's look at the green cars, and if I put them all together car by car, then I'd be grouping like this. And when I do that, what do I see? Well, now what I see is that in each little car, I have two times two seats, two times two seats. So now I could write this as... 2 times 2, 
that's for each this this car right here and how many cars do I have one two three four so I'd multiply by four and now what does that give me well two times two is four. Oh, oh wait David don't forget it. wait a minute wait a minute you almost why didn't you you forgot about the plus two you silly friends all right we got to put in the blue plus two Phew. okay now back to work so let's focus on the thing that I was focusing on before you always do what's in the side of the parentheses first so that's gonna be two times two which is four times four and then don't forget the plus two we always do the multiplication before we do any addition so this means four times four which is sixteen by the way the two times two is four you can, you can count for yourself one two three four there's the four and we have four of them now four times four is sixteen plus the two and this should sound familiar because we've seen it before sixteen plus two is eighteen so check it out we get eighteen this way and we get eighteen this way and that's because we're seeing a wonderful example of associativity in multiplication which means that we can either multiply if you have three numbers that you're multiplying together you can either multiply the first two first and then multiply by the last one or you can actually take those parentheses and slide them over like like a, like a roller coaster Woo! and it goes over here and you can do that multiplication first and then multiply by two you see the difference the only difference is the parentheses So that is really an excellent example of associativity in multiplication. And it allows, actually, for easy counting. If you were to try to count them one by one, you might lose count. You might kind of count something twice, and you might get the wrong answer. But with associativity and systematic thinking, you will always, always get the right answer. Yes, I know, sometimes the questions are challenging, and it feels like you're on a roller coaster ride through mathematics. But remember, it's just as exciting and just as exhilarating as riding a real roller coaster. I better practice that again because I want to look really good when I'm on the roller coaster. So I'm going to grab the thing. All right, you ready? Tell me how it looks. Ah, ah, ah. Woo!